Sandra, do you think that Emma Hayes has been working on set pieces, both attacking and defending in camp? I think it's evident at this point, right? We we got some nervy moments throughout those games against Iceland where we saw these goals conceded off of uh, set pieces. And I think my reaction to that was just like, wow, this is just like a, an occurrence. This is just a thing that happens with the United States women's team. And it's a, to the point where it's uh, kind of, you know, a little bit uh, predates uh, Emma Hayes. So this is like almost a, perhaps a, an issue that she's inherited, but uh, leave it to Emma Hayes to say like, we absolutely got to work on this and try to, you know, make up for it. Or, or Naomi Gurma, like, listen, if we're going to concede, we better score on him as well. So her stepping up to the plate uh, in, in that regard. But I think it's pretty evident. I think with the extra time together, the training together and the schemes that they probably were working on within their, their trainings kind of leads to these moments. I think when you have, again, when you switch oppositions, when you, uh, you know, have another game tacked on, you're, you're giving yourself that opportunity. You're saying there's a third game here. Here's what we're not going to do that we did in these first two games. Con a, concede on set pieces and B, let's score a couple of our own. I love that they were able to go ahead and execute. Was the goal the Argentinian own goal, the second goal, not reminiscent of a Julie Ertz. Yes. In it was her giving. prime corner. It was giving. You yes. knew every, every time with the women's national team. All right. Julie Ertz, that blue pre-wrap that spread oh, yeah. out. So you're going to see it dart from the center around the goalkeeper to the front post. No matter how deep to the corner she's going, she's going to get something on it. It's going to be a driven ball. And we saw that with Gurm, I think, bringing her defender out. She, her her movement is what created that gap to create the own goal. And goal is a goal. I, I wish it went to Gurma because she was she sitting did. on a hat trick in this match. And I mean, what a way to just go out of a friendly, a, a, a couple of friendlies with the national team scoring a couple of goals, but would have loved the Hattie. It's going to come. It's going to come. It'll come for Gurma. Don't worry. It, it will come. <laughs> but I, I love this. I think we're seeing the U.S., get a little bit more into set pieces. Argentina, their back line, they're defensively were in shambles with, you know, they just have a lot going on. I, the Argentine players were giving their best, but I liked that the U S we finally saw some bite on set pieces, some different sort of organization because they have some tall, powerful players, especially with Sears in there. That's the only part of her game. I'm like, Oh, you need to be getting on the end of crosses and you are going to be a complete player. But the U.S. has some weapons in the front line that the set pieces definitely need to be better for me. For Emma Sears, she is more of a player that's whipping crosses in, not necessarily throwing her body on the line in the mix. Um, but it, it ultimately, U.S. goes up two goals in the 44th minute. They head into halftime, 2-0 up over Argentina. One sub just into the second half. Corbin Albert subs on for Rose Lavelle in the midfield. Um, and then in the 49th minute, we get our third goal from the United States, and it is a brace for center back Naomi Gurma. Another header, too. Like, not only is she scoring <laughs> goals, but she's getting her head on it. And the third yes. goal of the game, and she was part of all three of them, Darian. How was this one different? Take us through it. I love this. I mean, the ball was reserviced. Um, a cross came in. Argentina did well to clear the first cross. And then I wish we had a replay of it because if you watch Gurma's movement, she goes in for the first one against deflected and she has the movement of a nine where she recycles her run. She's checking her soldier. She's getting next to her defender, initiating contact. And then we have to give a lot of credit to Mallinson who just whipped a ball in with some pace behind it piercing through the back line of Argentina and Gurma with the whiplash <laughs> and everyone's faces and celebrations were like, ah. yeah, so, so good. Happy for this player, this trailblazer getting a brace. And it was a beautiful goal. I mean, mm -hmm. she is the new target on set pieces for the U S and then to see her go over and hug longtime teammate, longtime friend, Sophia Smith on the sidelines was just, the cherry on top for Naomi Gurma getting a brace tonight. Said, hey, I'm coming for your job. Watch out. Exactly. <laughs> Stay on the sidelines. <laughs> rest, easy, girl. Rest, 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 up. rest that ankle. <laughs> a, a brace for Naomi Gurma and Alyssa Melanson in her debut gets the assist on this third goal to come for the United States. And it, it was so good from the U.S. And you would think after the third time Naomi Gurma heads the ball in the box, or really the second time, that Argentina would, you know, 
double mark her at least throw a couple players on her so she doesn't have a wide open header and that's exactly what she does in the 49th minute ultimately to give the U.S. a 3-0 lead over Argentina and then we got to see a couple more subs come in the second 45 from the U.S. Emily Fox comes in for Haley Mace and Mallory Swanson in for Lindsay Horan. So that shifted Ashley Sanchez, who was playing um, in the left winger position deeper into the midfield as a 10 and Mallory Swanson played across the front line up top 70 minutes. We also got to see Casey Kruger sub in for Alyssa Milanson and Emily Sands make her second appearance with the U S women's national team in for Ava Gatino. So it was then Sams and Gurma playing together as that center back role. Darian, you touched on in the first half specifically how the U.S. was playing so direct. It, balls coming from Gaetano out of the back into the front line. And then there was also moments where there was quick little buildup down the pitch for the U.S. It was there a moment in this game where you saw the style of play shift for the U.S.? Yeah, knowing that Argentina was going to sit in that low block, we saw what I think Hayes was doing in the Olympics, which is really quick movement, short passes, um, the rotations between positions, this very fluid style of no one sits in one pocket for more than five seconds is what it feels like when you're watching this women's national team. I also loved that because Hirschfeld was the lone six, it was Albert and Sanchez that were playing the 8-10, and the U.S. plays now with five on the front line when they're in possession. Gurma's basically a false six at this point. Mm -hmm. She's able to go up and help build, help switch the point of attack, but really just bounce around whoever their opponent is. And I like this because it's drawing them out. It's creating those pockets where players like Swanson, Shaw, Lavelle, Sanchez like to operate, and it's creating those gaps. Um, so I like that we're seeing that evolve a little bit because watching Burma go higher and it's, yes, it's a little bit vulnerable, but the U.S. has really good countermeasures because if you're up in those pockets of space, as soon as you lose it, you can close down quicker. And I think we saw that. There was maybe one time where Argentina got out, but it wasn't enough of a threat to cause worry. But um, yeah, I really like this look from the U.S. And again, they just keep layering their style of play and how they can hit you. Emma Sears made her second um, appearance tonight for the U.S. Women's National Team, and she was so electric up top. She played a full 90. She was interchanging. She was so quick, so quick. That girl can run. Sandra, we just we have to give Sears some love. From her first cap on Sunday to earning her first start tonight, she's already got a goal and an assist coming from the last match. But how crucial was Sears in this her contribution to the U.S. women's national team play in this camp? It's funny to, to talk about a player who's just kind of making her debut across two games, kind of become that player that they leaned upon a little bit over the course of her time that she did see on the pitch. And I think that's what has sort of made Emma Sears so special to watch over these last couple of games. I mean, she's out there playing playing to the moment a little bit. I don't think we saw a ton of those um, kind of bright light jitters that maybe you can see from a player within a big moment from time to time. And maybe there was, uh, it was helpful to sort of have that first game against Iceland and then going back home because maybe, maybe sometimes when you're playing in, in front of your, in your club stadium where you're familiar with, maybe there's a, a, a layer that can come in where you're like, how am I going to perform now that I'm with the national team? But we didn't see that from Sears in this one. She was fearless in a lot of moments and really not afraid to sort of take advantage of, of what Argentina was presenting to the team and to her um, really kind of rough and tumble at moments, not afraid to take on um, the, the defenders in, in front of her and whipping these balls in um, to make sure that they were getting into the box for players who were making alternate runs or getting in positions to, to try to get a head on them or a body part on them. So to see her go from one game to another and not really kind of miss a step, or really kind of kind of look a little bit sharper in, in some stretches of the game, I think really speaks volumes to, to this talent. And I think it really speaks volumes to what we see with this women's national team pool. I love this for Sears because it's so, I mean, you guys have been in positions where you kind of go into a job like, hey, I know what I can do. And that's all I'm, uh, I'm not going to focus on anything else. She came in with that. And I was talking with Alexis and Nico today specifically about Sears. And Nico is saying she has the, I'm sure it's much more beautiful in Spanish, but has the scent of the game. She can just mm -hmm. pick out what's open, what to follow, who to go against, what to exploit. 
And we saw that. And I like that Emma Hayes was playing the style that fit into her, which is a little bit more direct. Let her go 1v1. It's like Alyssa Thompson. Let her gain confidence. Let her put players on their heels because then it's going to open up spaces for everyone else to operate. But play to this player's strengths. And we got that. And Sandra, you're right. I think she came in fearless. She looked more confident. She looked more savvy on the ball. And I'm excited for the future of this very, very young, talented rookie. Emma Sears has come onto the scene. And I think even when she got named to the roster, there were some people asking question marks about this young rookie only in her first professional year with racing Louisville. But she has proven that not only does she have the confidence to compete with the U S women's national team, but she also has the talent and the skill to do it both physically with her one V one ability. She is itching for one defender to come at her because she wants to go at them by herself. She's got so much confidence. She can cross the ball in. She can whip it hard and low on the ground. She can loft it far post. She can put a lot of different textures on the ball. She can also go herself and get in the right positions. Her her mind is really quick on the game. And I am so excited, so excited to see Sears back at Racing Louisville now under Bev Yanez. Once like Ooh. she's gotten time with the national team and under Emma Hayes, you think a little bit differently, right? The, a lot of players call it the national team rub. She's going to have that going back to Louisville and, and being able to take her game to the next level, to take Louisville's game to the next level, to also ask questions of her club coach, Bev Yanez, to teach her more things and to coach her differently to continue to evolve her game to be such a multifaceted player because there's a really high ceiling for Emma, Emma Sears and we've only gotten to see a glimpse of it in these two friendlies with Emma Hayes and, and with the U.S. women's national team. I'm excited for what is next for, for Emma Sears and to see more of her at the international level.